everybody, what's going on? Greg here with Z21 Learning, and today we're going to take a look at cropping and resizing pictures. Uh, we briefly talked about how to do this in a previous tutorial on MGN Online. Um, so we're going to cover some of the same ground that we did with that one, but we're also going to talk a bit about um, what do you do when you come across a picture that's too big and you need to go ahead and crop it down to size, or a picture is too small and you need to bring it up to size. Um, first things first, all the pictures that we upload into Cameo Asset Manager, which is where all the images reside, all need to be cropped to 1920 by 1080. That is a 16 by 9 ratio, and we do need to save them as a .png format. So in this case, um, I download an image from MGN that's of this FIFA World Cup. And it's a 1280 by 720, which means that's a 16 by 9 ratio. Like I said earlier, if you watch the MGN online tutorial that we did, but in case you missed it, um, we'll go ahead and show you how to go ahead and scale up this picture. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The easiest way I find is you just go up to image, and go to image size. And then here we're going to go ahead and uh, change the width from 1280 to 1920. And one thing I do want to point out first is you notice these little lines over here between the width and the height. That means that both of these uh, numbers are linked. So anytime you change the width, Photoshop is automatically going to go ahead and change the height. So I'm going to type in 1920 and the height already changes to 1080. It looks at the current ratio and goes ahead and does the math to go ahead and make it be still a 16 by 9 ratio. Um, if you ever open up the image size and you find that these aren't linked, just make sure that the uh, link button there is checked on, like that. And I just undid my work. Let me go ahead and change that back. There we go. So basically all we're doing with this image is we're just scaling it up. You can see the change over here. I'm going to go ahead and overwrite this image because I don't need the original copy anymore, so I'm just going to save it. And it was already a PNG, so I don't have to worry about changing the file format. So that's one way of doing it. It works really well with uh, pictures that are already the same ratio. But what do you do when you come across a picture that isn't the same ratio? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I have this picture of a boardwalk. And if we look at the dimensions, these dimensions are, well, quite large for what we're using, uh, 4928 by 30. 3264. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open this. And in this case, I'm going to go up to my crop tool. And what the crop tool allows you to do is allows you to go ahead and crop to a certain uh, image size that you go ahead and specify. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and type in 1920 by 1080. And to go ahead and confirm the crop, there's two different ways you can do it. One is you can come up here to the check mark. And the other is if you're on a PC, you can press enter. Or if you're on a Mac, you can press return, I believe. No, it's enter, I guess. It's enter on both. <laughs> um, so you go ahead and confirm the crop. That looks good. And we'll notice that everything seems to be 16 by 9, but we didn't actually see any change in the image. What I mean by that is normally when you crop a picture down or you crop it up, Photoshop will automatically go ahead and kind of recalculate what the image is supposed to look like at your current resolution inside of Photoshop. And we didn't see that here. What I want to show you guys is I go to image, image for image size. We cropped it to a 16 by 9 ratio, but we didn't actually change the image dimensions. So what I need to do in this case is I need to go back to my crop tool. And up here we notice that says yeah. Up here we notice it says 16 by 9 as the ratio. So they click on this and I select front image. I don't actually have a front image so it doesn't know really what to look for. It's kind of looking at the dimensions of the current image here and automatically fills in the brackets up here. Now the first one, this is going to be your x value, so this is your width. Then it goes to your height and then it goes to the image resolution. So in this case, I'm going to change the width to 1920. The height is going to be 1080. I'm going to leave the resolution at 72. That's fine. And then I'm going to confirm the crop. And you'll notice that Photoshop goes ahead and shrinks the image back. 
Now if I go up to image, image size, we notice that I have cropped it to 1920 by 1080. So again, if you're gonna use the crop tool, make sure that you're using the right specifications. Uh, if you're set to just 16 by nine ratio, you're only gonna be taking the image and cropping it to a 16 by nine ratio. You're not really changing the image dimensions. So keep that in mind. So now I can come up here to File, I'm going to click Save As, and I'm not going to overwrite the JPEG version of this. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a PNG. So I'll call this PNG, and Save, and voila. Before we go further, I want to show you guys what it looks like when you upload a picture into Cameo Asset Manager that is actually too big. It's a 16 by 9 ratio, but it's not cropped to 1920 by 1080. I'm going to go ahead and launch the Lucy plugin here. And I'm going to search for the desk monitor background. Then I have a boardwalk image that I cropped earlier. And this is a 16 by 9 ratio. You notice when I preview it, everything seems to be fine. But when I drag and drop it here into the image template field, it appears really zoomed in. And the reason why is the template is set up to go ahead and look at the image. And if the image is bigger than 1920 by 1080, it's only going to go ahead and focus in on that section. So it's not going to go ahead and look at the entire image. It's only going to look at a 1920 by 1080 portion of the image, in which case this time it's just be the center of the image. And that's why our monitor graphic looks like this. Again, that's really why you want to pay attention to the image size when you're uploading into Cameo Asset Manager. So this has been one way you can do it. Another way is over here on the right, I have to have an Actions button. Basically what Actions are, is these are kind of like macro scripts that you go ahead and set up inside of Photoshop to go ahead and generate uh, things such as text effects, or in this case, uh, canvases that have guides and stuff on them to go ahead and tell you where to position a picture. So that I open up my actions, we see I have a couple different actions here. The one I'm looking at here, the one I want to use here, is one called Generic Canvas. And that just generates one that's a blank canvas with no guides on it that allows me to go ahead and copy and paste images in there. So this is an alternative to cropping pictures. I also happen to have it saved as a shortcut on the keyboard. Mine happens to be Shift F12. I know if you're working on the graphics PC, it's just gonna be F12. If you've seen any of the other tutorials, you know I always say this, but if your actions panel doesn't look like this, just come up here to the top right, make sure that you're checked in button mode. Um, if you don't see the actions panel here in, your, in any of these uh, panels here on the right side of the screen, just go up to window, make sure that actions is checked. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and close up my Actions panel. I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut. Oops. So my Shift F12. That generates a new canvas for me to work on. So in this example, we're just going to strictly look at adding a picture to blank canvas in this case. And we're not going to worry about cropping the picture. We're going to, we're going to worry more about scaling the picture down to go ahead and fit on the screen. So I'm going to go up to File, Open. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and let's use this Cascade Creek one. Press open. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this image over into my blank canvas. So I'm going to click up here, bring it over to this tab, and then I'm also going to hold down the shift button. And by doing that, it's going to go ahead and position the picture dead center in the middle of my screen. So let go. And here's my image. And we can tell that the image is really kind of zoomed in, and that's because the image size is much larger than the canvas screen I'm working on. So I need to go ahead and scale this image down. I'm going to go over to Edit, Transform, and I'm going to go ahead and transform the scale. So I'm going to do that. Nothing seems to have happened. Um, the reason why is the scale uh, parameters are actually outside of my screen. I can't actually see them because the image is so big. So I need to go ahead and zoom out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use the keyboard shortcuts. If you're on a PC, it's going to be Control minus to zoom out, Control plus to zoom in. If you're on a Mac, it's Command minus to zoom out, Command plus to zoom in. I'm going to toggle out once. And we see the parameters up here. We see it kind of has this bounding box for the uh, transform scale. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Shift, Alt, or Shift Option if you're on a Mac, buttons. And that's going to allow me to go ahead and scale the picture proportionally, as well as scaling it in towards the center. If I didn't hold down those two buttons when I tried scaling it, the image ratio size would change, so it could be stretched or distorted as well as also scaling down more towards the bottom left since I'm dragging from the top right. So I'm going to undo that really fast and hold down Shift and Alt. It's going to scale the image down. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm not trying to get the entire image on the screen like this because you're going to notice that I've got blanks. You're going to notice that I have blank spaces on all sides. So I really just kind of want the image to kind of fill the screen. That looks pretty good. To confirm the transformation, I'm just going to go ahead and come up here and press the check mark, or if you're on a Mac or PC, you can just press Enter. Once I'm happy with the image and its placement, I can go over to File, Save As, and we can just call this uh, oops, Cascade Creek or whatever. Save as PNG, and we're done. So that's another option where you don't have to worry about using the crop tool and cropping it to the right size, making sure that you're changing the actual image size and not just the image ratio. Now, what do you do when you come across an image that happens to be too small, that is smaller than 1920 by 1080 and isn't a 16 by 9 ratio? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. So I happen to have this ice ball picture here. And we notice the dimensions are actually smaller than 1920 by 1080. Not by much, but still. We're going to go ahead and press Open. And then I'm going to generate a new canvas. And we're going to use the generic canvas in this case. So I'm just going to hold down Shift F12. I'm going to go over to my ice ball picture. I'm going to drag this over to my new canvas. Hold down Shift to have it land there centered. If I were to just go ahead and save this and upload it into Camera Asset Manager right now, when we were to go ahead and preview it, the blank spaces here, the transparent areas, would show up as being black. Now, it's not the end of the world, but it also doesn't look that good either. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take this image, duplicate it, and have one copy serve as a background and the other copy serve as the foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this image. The way you do that is you go up to Layer, Duplicate Layer. Now you can go ahead and call this you know, background if you want, or you can leave it as Layer 2 Copy. Totally up to you. So now I have two copies of my picture. So the bottom copy, I'm going to leave as the background. And I want to scale this version up. So I'm going to go over to Image. I'm sorry, I'm going to go over to Edit, Transform, Scale. I'm going to scale it proportionally from the center outward, so I'm going to hold down Shift and Option or Shift Alt on the PC. I'll do something like that. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to click on the top copy. I'm going to scale this image down. So I really kind of want to have this ice ball be on the screen without it being cut off. And we notice that the picture itself actually is slightly more, that the ice ball is actually not quite dead center. So I'm going to go ahead and move it down just a little bit. There we go. Looks pretty good. Now, one way we can make this even better is we could go ahead and take this background image and blur it up so that it's not quite so clear as to what it is. Um, we really want the viewer's eye to be drawn in more towards the center. And this background image is really just kind of a filler. It's just filling in the space. So to blur this, I'm going to go up to Filter, go to Blur. And in this case, we're going to use a Gaussian Blur. And that looks, actually looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it at 9.7. And then I'm going to come over here to my Adjustments panel. I'm going to add a Curves Adjustment. 
And the way the curves works is it kind of looks at the colors of the image and it allows you to go ahead and drive um, the contrast if you want or to drive, uh, maybe you wanted to darken the image or brighten the image. So I'm gonna click down here towards kind of the bottom of this line. Just kind of drag it downwards. I'm actually darkening part of the image. Looks pretty good. Then I might come over here and I'm gonna change the brightness and contrast. And the way these layers work is these are adjustment layers. So anything that is underneath these layers are affected by it, but it doesn't affect my foreground layer because it is above the adjustment layers. If I were to drag this foreground layer beneath them, we notice that the adjustment layers are now affecting it. Let's put that back there on top. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, again, you don't really have to get into all the adjustment layers and stuff if you don't want to. I do just because I like to go ahead and darken the background image um, so that it really kind of draws the viewer's attention more towards the foreground picture. So that's just my own personal preference. So now that I have this image where I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm gonna go up to File and click Save As. So in this case, I'm gonna call this Ice Ball. Save that as a PNG. Click Save. And voila. It's still thinking about it, but it will save it here in a second. <laughs> One thing I should mention is if for whatever reason you go into your Actions panel and you find that the full screen templates aren't there, that's totally fine. You can actually make your own, at least in the case of Generic Canvas. The rest of these do have guides on them. So if you're missing those, let me know and I can get those to you. But in the case of generic canvas, it's very easy to create your own. All you would do is you just go up to File, New. Then under here, then under New Document, you just make sure that the width is 1920, 1080 is the pixels. Uh, resolution, um, I guess I have mine set at 182.88. <laughs> Wasn't aware of that. Uh, you could change it to 72 if you wanted, or you could do 182.88. That's totally fine. Um, you just don't really want to have too high of a number because then the image file size is going to be larger. So do keep that in mind, you know, keep it reasonable, but not too extreme. And then once you're done, you're just going to press create and you've created a new canvas. So I mentioned earlier that we do have these full screen templates and occasionally you may get a request from the news department asking you to create a graphic that fits within one of these full screens. One of the most common ones that I get requests for is the Weekender report that we do typically on Thursdays or Fridays. And the full screen graphic is called, that they use, it's called Things To Do Event. So I click on Things To Do. That creates a new canvas with these two guides in there. Basically what we need to go ahead and keep in mind is when we create a graphic, we need to make sure that the image of the picture that we want the audience to focus on, where the action of the image is, is within these two guides. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna open up a picture. I have this countryside picture. Maybe they're doing some sort of country fair or something like that, or maybe it's a, it's a nature walk event they're doing on the weekends. Whatever, use your imagination. And they have asked for me to use this picture or they want me to find a picture of a tree or something and I found this instead. Um, so what I would do in this case is I'm gonna open this up I'm going to take my tree, I'm going to put it in this screen, and I want to make sure that the tree is between these two guides. The tree really is the focal point of this image. So let me actually zoom out here. I'm going to scale this picture down a little bit. So something like that. Now the cool thing about this is when I save this image out and I upload it to Cameo Asset Manager, not only can you, they use this picture for the things to do event full screen, but they can also use it for things such as the desk monitor, the wall background, uh, the interview set, and various other full screen templates. 
Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this picture out. Go to file, save as. Maybe we'll just call this uh, country tree. I know that's a pretty bad file name, but <laughs> bear with me. Go ahead and save it out. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up Cameo. Go ahead and load it into images and pics. Maybe we'll save under environment. That looks good. I'm going to go over here to the Lucy plugin. And let's say we want to use this for a things to do event. So we'll just type that in things to do event. Call it country tree. Go ahead and drop it on in here. So not only does it work for this full screen, but maybe they want to use this picture for a monitor graphic. And there you have it. A picture that can literally be used for multiple different templates that is sized to go ahead and work not only within things to do event, but also works with wall shots and monitor backgrounds and things like that. So do keep that in mind when you're designing this stuff. Now sometimes you may get a request and it is kind of fun to go ahead and do stuff that's a little bit different. Um, in this case, I actually got a request a couple of weeks ago asking for a uh, traffic signal. And on MGN online, they do have what they call elements. And one of the things they had was a traffic signal element. And I thought it'd be kind of cool just to put that in here um, without actually worrying about having a background image behind the traffic signal. Let me show you what I mean. So let's see, what did I call it again? I was just traffic light or something. Oops, I hope I spell light right. There we go. So we notice when I preview this that the entire image is blank except for the traffic light, so there is no background to it. But when I drag and drop it here into the things to do event, it's full screen. It kind of gives it sort of a different look. It looks like it was actually um, designed for this full screen as opposed to just being a picture that we plopped down in there. So there are, you know, different ways you can do um, some of these full screens, different ways of thinking about it. Caveat to that is this traffic light really only works for the full screens. This really won't work too well if they use this for, you know, maybe a monitor shot or something like that. Because um, you're going to have all this black space around there and that doesn't look that good. Uh, as I said earlier, there are plenty of different ways of cropping pictures, resizing pictures. These are just kind of the easiest methods that I have found in the past. So feel free to play around. Um, maybe you'll come up with your own Photoshop action and resize it all for yourself magically, which actually isn't such a bad idea. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to comment below or shoot me an email. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, take it easy.